So today's topic is going to be on high cholesterol on keto. So many people sometimes freak out because their cholesterol is too high. I've done quite a few videos on this, but I wanted to create a video on something very specific that you need to know about. So here's the big point. A good amount of your cholesterol, and by the way, there's two organs in your body that make cholesterol. One is the liver, but also the intestines. So a good majority of your cholesterol is controlled by bile salts. Okay, so bile salts are made by the liver and the intestine. All right, so we've got the liver and the intestine. And excess cholesterol is eliminated through various pathways involving bile. So you need bile to eliminate excess cholesterol. And the regulation of excess cholesterol is dependent on bile. Now, as far as the small intestine goes, there's these little receptors, and they're called bile acid receptors. Another name for a uh, bile acid receptor would be an FXR receptor. Not that you need to know that. Now, what these receptors do is they regulate cholesterol by suppressing cholesterol. Now, the liver also influences cholesterol as well, but not as much as the small intestine. The small intestine really regulates HDL, the so-called good cholesterol. Well, it's not good or bad. It's the cholesterol from the cell back to the liver. So look at this right here. We've got HDL goes from the cell back to the liver, and then LDL goes from the liver to the cell. So they're just transportation um, proteins as in high-density lipoprotein or low-density lipoprotein. All right, so far so good. Let's go on to the next slide. There's another condition called cholesterolemia. Okay? Now, essential means they don't know what causes it. Very similar to essential high blood pressure. They don't, they don't really know what causes it. We, we know it's usually vitamin D and low potassium. But essential hypercholesterolemia includes familial hypercholesterolemia. And this is that condition which is genetic, okay, which people are concerned about because they don't really think they can do anything about it. But you can do things about it, and I will put a link down below. So that's just one part. There's other causes of this unknown high cholesterol, um, a high fat diet. Okay. But if you have high cholesterol, it'd be a very good idea to get some advanced lipid testing to really find out more of what's going on. You're going to find out um, the type of high LDL that you have is actually the good LDL. But I don't want to get into that right now. I want to kind of stay on track. So we have genetics, high fat diet because you're doing keto, but also hypo thyroidism. That can cause high cholesterol in the blood. Also, kidney damage. And a deficiency in bile. Okay, Now that can be from some obstruction from a kidney stone or, and that's what I really want to talk about right now, so what causes a de deficiency in bile? Because bile is very, very important in breaking down fats to absorb fat-soluble vitamins. It helps lubricate the colon. It helps prevent SIBO in the small intestine. But it also has a very important function in regulating cholesterol. Okay. So what would cause a deficiency in bile? Main thing is liver damage. Okay as in a fatty liver, an inflamed liver, as in hepatitis, or a liver that's filled with fibrotic tissue, or a liver that has scar tissue, which is called cirrhosis. Okay, 
So all three of those conditions will cause a deficiency in bile because anything that decreases the liver function decreases the amount of bile production. But you also have the small intestine. And that would be the next thing I will, I'll mention. If you have intestinal damage, okay? So let's say you had a series of antibiotics that just destroyed your intestine. Or let's say you have celiac or Crohn's or diverticulitis. Any inflammation or damage in your small intestine will decrease the production of bile. And that can spike the cholesterol. Now, because your friendly bacteria, the microbiome, also help to recycle bile, if there's a problem in the microbiome, you're not going to make enough bile. So the good bacteria could be another thing to look at. Or it could be that you had the gallbladder removed. You have no gallbladder. In which case, you're going to have less bile. So all of these are factors that can contribute to high cholesterol. I just wanted to bring up your awareness on another uh, link to high cholesterol that you need to be aware of. Because a solution, a very simple solution, would be, if you had liver damage, is just to take some purified bile salts. Okay? And that is going to help regulate cholesterol. Now, it also could be that you need to take more good bacteria. Okay, so that's another solution right there. Or it could be that you have a, a slow thyroid. So the point is that in order to fix something, you have to know all the potential causes and then what's the most likely cause. All right, thanks for watching and tell me what you think of this new format. I'm just trying it out. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. Uh, and then I wrote a book um, more extensive called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about a thousand hours into this one right here called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever wanna know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning. It goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto Intermittent Fasting. This is the shortcut, a uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you, within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special. If you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.